Let's give a shout. Don't sit down there. Wow. Now, let's thank God that at Word Alive, the Word has come alive. Let's thank God for that. Now, let's thank God for Bev and Kent Maddox. What a blessing they are. Now, let's thank God for Alabama. Now, let's thank God for what he's doing in America. Let's thank him for that. Hallelujah. Now, bless someone again. You may be seated. Goodness. You know, it's amazing to be here. I'm, I'm trying to remain a little composed because I, I really felt the Spirit when I came in here this morning. I, I, it's, uh, it's amazing. I've been going pretty nonstop since uh, uh, the year began. And so last night I was able to sit and spend time with the Lord and, and then just re- rehearse and remember what the Lord has said about Alabama. And to see you doing it and to see you moving in it is not just key for Alabama. It is a sign for our nation. Let's thank God for that. And so this morning, I want to remind us of some things, and I, then I, I want to share some things with us so we get a feel of what's going on spiritually, and then prophesy again over what God is saying here. I kept seeing words over people while they were here, uh, and uh, so I'll attempt to move as efficiently as possible, and as Kent said, you know, I couldn't wait to give into this month, into this state, into what God is doing. So we want to enter into all the blessings that the Lord has. Now, we are in an incredible identity crisis right now. Look at somebody and say, I know that is for you. <laughs> but it's not a bad thing because we're moving into who we are called to be in days ahead, and yet you've got to make your shift. You have to keep moving. Uh, I like a word that uh, Daniel uh, gave at starting the year off right when he came in from Israel. He said, the Lord told me this year we were to be a moving target. In other words, we just keep moving no matter what, and the enemy would not be able to target us because we kept on the move, and eventually we would come in to triumph. Let's thank God that triumph's on the way. Now, now when I always look at the year, I want to go back and forth between the time we're in now as well as the Hebrew year that we're in, because they're both very significant. Uh, I can't think of a better picture that represents the year we're in. I usually start the year at Rosh Hashanah, which is uh, uh, September, end of September, beginning of October, sometimes in that time frame. Uh, it's, the, it's the seventh month. It's the dearest month to the Lord. And this year that we're in isn't just about a year. It's not just about a decade but it is about a historical era that we're shifting into. That's what makes this meeting here in Alabama so important because we are shifting into a new history. Everybody say a new history. And so what the year looks like when you look at 5780, that's the best picture I can think of it. The line of the tribe of Judah is blowing in from heaven. See, it's not just about it's not just about the earth changing right now. It's also about the heaven shifting. 
And in the midst of it, we are coming face to face with him in a new way. Judah is coming face to face with him in a new way. And it's creating a new sound between heaven and earth. And that sound is rising up in us. See, sound creates movement. And so, in the midst of right now, movement is beginning to occur. Now, Psalms 102 says this, there comes a time where the heavens become old and fade away. In other words, this is what makes this era so different because the heavens are shifting. And when the heavens are shifting, that means you're going to start seeing things in the earth you couldn't see in the last season. You're going to start seeing things that you're going to start seeing things manifest that couldn't manifest in the last season. So we have now entered a realm that we have never been in especially over the last 70 years. Now, that becomes very important for us as we enter this particular era. Now, this era is about a new Holy Spirit movement. Get ready. You might have been baptized in Holy Spirit. You might have been a part of a move of God with Holy Spirit, but Holy Spirit is coming to visit us again. And in this era of Holy Spirit movement, Holy Spirit is going to invade every era, every area of society that you can imagine because, see, wineskins have come into a new level of maturity for this season. That's what you're experiencing here at Word Alive. It's a wineskin that is now matured as a sending agent to affect the entire region. But I don't think just to affect the entire region, but to affect the entire world. And so, and especially this nation. So get ready. We are ready for an explosive kingdom movement. A kingdom movement, not a church movement. A kingdom movement is at hand. And the kingdom of the Lord is getting ready to manifest in us. So because of that, we have to know that our spirit must be filled and arise to withstand the conflict and the chaos around us. Now this becomes really key for us because you're going to see Holy Spirit confronting God's people. Holy Spirit in our midst is going to start saying, I am ready to do a new work in you. I'm ready to move in you a new, a new way. You're going to have dreams during the night. You're going to have visions. You're going to have the Spirit of God arrest you right while you're moving in your everyday uh, operations. But the movement is now going to start, and it's not going to be able to be stopped. So we're in for a, a six-year divine move of the Spirit that will change the course of society. Let's thank God for that. Now, because of that, right now, we're going through a great mending time. The Lord is taking you, if you're here uh, listening today, He's taking you through this time of preparation. The word mending is the same word used in the Greek uh, that you've heard Dutch sheets teach on it, kartotismo, where everything realigns into your life where old holes that have been there, where you would seep out when you shouldn't seep out. The Lord's bringing healing. He's finding some things that he's bringing some things up 
that never could be brought up before. And so it becomes really important that you understand that through April we are being mended. Now, the easiest way to, for you to understand this is remember when the Lord had shifted the wineskin from John the Baptist over and he was gathering his disciples and he was teaching. He was known as a teacher. He was known as a carpenter. And, but people were having to see him as Messiah, as the Mashak, as the anointed one as the one they had waited on and watched for. And remember, as he was teaching, crowds were following him. And uh, Peter, James, and John followed him. Philip and Andrew were the only two that left John the Baptist uh, uh, wineskin and followed the Lord. And then they started bringing others to him. Andrew brought his brother Peter. They were fishermen. And so they still did their jobs out in uh, society. And so remember, they w had been fishing all night. They came in. They, had, they were mending their nets. Now what that means was this. They were, they were causing the holes in those nets to be tied up so they could gather what was coming in the next season. And so they're out mending the net, and the Lord decides, I'll go get in their boat. Now, you are aware that the Lord does not have to ask you if he can get in your boat. Now, this is what I want to say to the churches of Alabama. Get ready. The Lord's about to get in your boat. He's just going to show up. That word can go out to all the churches here. He's just going to show up. And, I, I, and I'll tell you why, because I saw it. And anyway, he gets in the boat. They finish mending. Now, mending means that you're getting ready for your future. That's another way of thinking about mending. If you don't ever get mended, you have a hard time of stepping into the future because you're always losing strength from your past. And so they go back and get in their boat, and all of a sudden, when they get in the boat, the Lord shifts from being a rabbi, a teacher, into being an apostolically driven Messiah. And he says, launch out into the deep. Well, Peter doesn't even. Peter respects him, but he actually looks at him and says, you know, you don't really know we've already done that. You don't know what you're really talking about, but nevertheless, we'll do it because we respect you. In other words, we respect your teaching, but you've shifted over into a realm that we really don't think you know what you're doing in. Now, I want to warn us, the Lord is about to shift us all into realms we don't really know what we're doing in. And all of a sudden, they get out where they were, and the Lord has a different method for them. He tells them, shift what you've been mending to another side. They shift it over. They start catching so much that they have to call in the other boats of the region. A tremendous picture of harvest. But what really happens is what happens in Peter. All of a sudden, he falls, rips his mantle off. Falls, repents, and here's why he repents. Not because he's done something wrong, because he didn't know how powerful and how good and how capable that Messiah was to bring him into a new level of increase.
Now, I want to announce to you, get ready, Messiah is bringing us into a new level of increase. Now, let me show you something here. See, let's look at 2020 for a moment. This year is almost, in our calendar, is almost as, as incredibly prophetic as looking at it from the Hebrew calendar. Because 20 actually means stretch out the palm of your hand. Now, we are in a season of 2020. Take both hands and stretch them out. That means you're going to be able to grab hold of another handful this season. You're going to be able to grab hold of something you couldn't grab hold of in last season. And so we're going through this incredible redefining time. Realigning time, recompense. Uh, if you don't understand that word, it means things that you weren't able to grab hold of in the last season that went through your fingers and you lost. The Lord says, This is the year of payback. It's the era of payback. And we're we're seeing power restored back to us. We're seeing our future reset. Now, that brings me to Alabama, which I feel like is so key in everything I've said. Go ahead, Aaron, and let's look at it. Now, remember, in 2008, when God caught me up, and I've written this, Matter of fact, I've got a brand new book out there called uh, The Triumphant Kingdom. And it explains this more in detail. It also talks about the next four years of angelic visitation. Now, it's a blessing that we have, uh, uh, who travels with us and who's been with us since the early 90s is Marty Casty. This is her first time to visit here. Marty, please stand up. In one of my books, I write a whole chapter about Marty, about how Marty Cassidy sees angels because she has this incredible gift to see the angelic in motion. Well, one of the things in this book I explain is how angels will visit us in this next season. And... Uh, be careful because you will be entertaining angels. Supernaturally entertaining angels. And while I was in New Jersey on 2008, May 31st, the Lord caught me up and he showed me our nation. He showed me a move of God in every state. And he said, that's, that's the next move of God. He caught me into the future. He showed me thrones of iniquity in every state. And he said, there will come a time where this triumphant reserve will be strong enough that the thrones of iniquity in states will begin to fall and my glory will begin to flood the state. <laughs> he showed me these these central places throughout states that look like, and not every state had these, they look like fiery castles, and uh, the Lord called them freedom outposts, and he called them, uh, and he said they would become like the apostolic centers for glory that people would gather in, and they would come in in one dimension of glory and leave seven times brighter in glory. Then he showed me every state. Now, not every state was in alignment. Two states were hanging in the balance, California and Florida. Last year, I went to Florida eight times. 
Now, that was almost as many times as I went to our own place that we have in Corinth. Because Florida, it was that important. That Florida shift. They rallied that triumphant reserve there. And that's why when you see that hurricane coming toward it, all of a sudden it just takes a turn and goes. I mean, they, they really surrounded their state with prophetic decrees. The number one and the first state that the Lord said would have awakening and be filled with the glory and become a prototype and the glory would go out to this entire nation would be Alabama. Let's thank God for Alabama. Now, I probably wouldn't have chosen Alabama. God chose Alabama. And through the years, I would come and I'd prophesy about how, what the Lord wanted here. But you know, prophets can prophesy all they want. It takes those who have apostolic authority in a land to take ownership of what God is saying to their land. And again, I want to say when uh, Apostle Kent Maddox called me and said, what y'all were going to be doing, going to every county in this state... I knew then that the next move of God here in America had begun. Let's thank God for this. Now, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is no small thing that's happening. I know prophetic revelation. I know how it works. It's my job. It's what I do all over the world. All of a sudden, I knew a new era had broken into Earth's atmosphere here in America. Now, let me share one more thing. Because remember, I asked the Lord, I said, how will America change? Lord, is there, is there hope for us? And he said, yes. And this was on May 31st, 2008. He said they must learn to play the trump card. Now, I'm not sure we have yet quite learned how to play the trump card. But I do believe we are learning to play the trump card. Now, he knew how he could tell me that in that way because I grew up playing cards from the time I was... Amen from somebody out there. <laughs> from the time I was five on, I remember uh, playing cards. And, and the trump card, you can't, if you play it right, nothing can play over it. And so, and then someone said, well, once we got further into all of it with our pres present president, and uh, they said, well, will he have two terms? I said, the Lord showed me through the third year. Now, this is what I want to say to you. He caught me up in through the end of 2019. This was in 2008. To show me that in the third year, there would be, and I've written this, I've shared this, that there would be an attempt to impeach the president. And I said, well, I can't say anything about after, until after the third year. Now, I want to say this. Some way or another, and this is the first time I've said this this year because I've been speaking in lots of other places and other nations. Some way or another, we have endured 
as a nation some major test. And all of a sudden, starting this week, we've crossed over into this new era. Now, this makes us have that sovereign understanding that God is now in control of lots of things. It's not, some way or another, it shifted into his hands. And yet, I'm going to say this one more time. I'm not sure had Alabama not started shifting that our nation could have started shifting. That's how important I have watched all this play out like a movie, including us commissioning a, 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 a person like Chief Parker into his role in this state. See, all of a sudden, you've done what the Lord said you would do. You're doing what the Lord said you would do. You're crossing over all those color boundaries, all those issues that you have to cross over here in Alabama, all the political boundaries, all the good old boy boundaries, and shifting into a move of God. I want to say to you, you are one of the few places that I see now that the move of God, it will be hard for what God is doing here in Alabama. It will be hard for the enemy to stop what God is doing here in Alabama. Now, that's important. That is very, very important as you move forward. So, a new era has broken into Earth's atmosphere. Judah is rising. Now, all of a sudden, Judah is going first. Now, Judah isn't just the praise team. Judah is that apostolic, prophetic thrust that knows how to use sound to create movement. It was the tribe that had to go first. They knew how to war. It was God's number one apostolic tribe. See, what's making this season so different, because I've been in this since the 80s in the prayer movement, it's really not intercessory driven. It's apostolically, prophetically intercessory driven. That is a different alignment than we have ever seen in America in a move of God. Therefore, the move of God that is brewing now is greater than any move of God we have known. And so, we're now moving into revival, into awakening but I think one of the models that you're creating is a model of conquest. And so it becomes what you'll run into is all of a, vi- uh, all of a sudden you're going to get to a place and faith's going to explode. And uh, miracles are going to start happening. Uh, I saw word over this girl up here with the uh, hair, the, the fire hair. Yeah. There was a word over here. I don't know where she is, but it, when I see her, where is she? Oh, she's back. I see her hair way back there. Stand up for a moment. Uh, the Lord said, the word that was over you came out of, it was a scripture, but it was a word. It says, you will snatch out. 
And the Lord said, because you have known darkness, and you have seen darkness, and you have been surrounded by darkness, I'm going to, you will be leading troops that will snatch people out of darkness. The Lord says in this next move of God, there will be darkness that's circling and all of a sudden I will already have a troop going in and say everything that belongs to God's coming with us. The Lord says, get ready, honey. Get both hands ready because you're going to snatch double fistfuls and bring many out. Now, Judge, you stand up, too. There's a word over you. You get nervous when you prophesy to a judge. Uh, It was real interesting what I saw. The Lord says, I'm going to start using your voice in a way that it's not been used. The Lord says, uh, your voice is going to create uh, a clear trumpet to rally others out of their passivity into a new move of justice. The Lord says, I'm going to use you to say, come out from being apathetic. Come out from being cowardice and come into the role that you have been called to come into. The Lord says, I will give you the way that you speak. Because I saw something else, and I I saw this rise up against you. The Lord said, uh, Shimei's will start rising up, and you'll have to see it. I just see the word over you. Uh, Shimei was a guy that tried to dethrone David's move. And he said, Shimei's will rise up against you, but the Lord says, I will surround you with key, key Annas who know what the devil's doing when you need, when you need wisdom, ask me for the Annas, saith the Lord. And I say, and all those Shimei's, you're going to start throwing them off the wall. You're going to start throwing them off the wall. So the Lord says, when that rises up against you, you will be the prototype of casting down what tried to uproot in my move of this whole state. I say to you, get ready. I will use you to trumpet the next move of justice in this land, saith the Lord. Now, let me move quickly. I want to show you a couple of things, and I want to just keep moving in what the Lord's doing. This is what 80 looks like. It's called pay. Everybody say payback. Actually, that's the way you want to think about it. This whole decade is about payback, but pay, the number 80, is linked with our mouth. Therefore, it's linked with words, it's linked with expressions, it's linked with vocalization, speech, it's linked with breath. Now, this is the way you want to look at this letter in Hebrew. Notice you've been in one structure, not not bad, it's been awesome. But now, notice there's an opening out of the structure you've been in to come into the next dimension that the Lord has for you. Now, with that, notice this. There's two key passages. Uh, The first is Job 22. You will also declare a thing. The word declare is a pay word. It will be established for you. See, while you're speaking... Light is forming. See, every time you speak, light is causing your path to form. And it says, so light will start shining on your way. That's why that Waymaker song has such an anointing on it. 
Then here's the one that I really like. For the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, its maker says this, Ask me about things to come concerning your sons and daughters. In other words, God is giving us great authority this year to ask about the next generation. And the generation after that. And then he says this, this is how much, I, I want to say this differently, but there's no other way to say it. The Lord believes in us this era. Tell somebody, he, he needs you and he believes in you this era. I mean, don't be afraid to know that God is really giving us authority to move he says, command and give me orders. In other words, I am ready to move. Here's the pay word. You command me. You tell me what you want to see happen. Concerning the next two generations to come, you tell me to do it, and I'll send that host of heaven down to work. I will cause my hands to work. So you see how important it is as we understand both dynamics. So let me summarize this for us. Here's the other thing. The last two years, I've asked the Lord what he's saying at the beginning of each year. Last year, he told me, uh, when I asked about 2019, I said, what do you say? He said, just plow through it. In other words, it's going to be some hard ground. It's going to be some crusty places. Just start plowing and don't stop until you have broken up the fallow ground. And Dutch Sheets and I went to 22 different regions across America, just like you're going here in, uh, uh, in uh, Alabama. And so I asked him about this year, and he said very clearly, clearly to me, tighten your belt. Now, that can mean several things to us. But it means there's a different dynamic of provision coming. It also means that he is developing us in a way that we're going to be a lot leaner and a lot meaner. Tell somebody I really like that. <laughs> now, so our, our, our identity is shifting into who we really are. We're going to be a new sharp threshing instrument with teeth. And you're going to have to make sure that you're not, and this is a danger for the southern, for lots of places, but especially the south. We get familiar with each other. Do not get that Nazareth syndrome on you because the person sitting next to you when God does a new work in them, they are going to be different. They're going to manifest differently. Things are going to start happening differently. Remember, G Jesus was known as a teacher. He was known as a, as a carpenter in Nazareth. But after he got baptized by John and Father called him into his time, and he resisted every temptation known to every one of us here. Think about everything we've all done in this room. Whoa. <laughs> now just think about that. He resisted every temptation known to mankind. And resisted Satan. Came out of that wilderness... At, with his Messiah robe on. We're, we've got uh, 
uh, Jews here who have accepted the Messiah because they saw him for who he was. But when they got back to Nazareth, they couldn't see him. They, they couldn't get past him being a rabbi. They couldn't get past him being a carpenter. They couldn't get past his family in the area. Therefore, God himself couldn't change the atmosphere. Now, I am here to tell Alabama, your atmosphere is changing. It is having an acceleration of change. And the Lord says, don't you back down from the changes that are ahead. I don't know of any state that is moving in any greater of change than I see going on here. And we have some states that are moving by the Spirit. And so, see, all of a sudden, we're in this new dimension. And really, this summarizes it. How your voice comes out of your house will set the course of your future in this era. In other words, I look at the history of Alabama. I've been to Selma. I've done many things with many people here in prophetic acts. That's, not, that's a part of your history, but that's not who you are and what will limit you in the future. The Lord says you are on the move now as one person to demonstrate to all America that changes have come to this nation and out of Alabama changes will overtake the nation for the kingdom of God. Let's thank God for that. When you determine your rule God expands your boundaries. You are now determining your rule here in Alabama. And now that glory that I saw cover Alabama will now start expanding. And that rule will go from state to state until that glory overtakes America. Now. Here's another thing that becomes important. We have entered a great season of tension. Tension, it's more of a physics word, where you're, pu you're, you're putting pressure on two different forces, and that pressure is stretching things to a limit. This will be the most tense year in the atmosphere we have known. Yet because of that, we are walking in the glory of God. See, one of the things you look at when you look at pay, uh, 80. 80 can be looked at as... Eight new beginnings, ten testimony. All your tests from the last season, you're going to start speaking them out in this season. And all those tests you went through in last season, even in your bloodline, the last 70 years, you're going to use those to liberate everybody that comes in your path in this season. So your testimony becomes incredible. But it's it, one thing that you see with pain, it's like a dichotomy. You've got light becoming lighter, you've got dark becoming darker, and it's creating this intense pressure. I think we all sense this. I don't think you would have to be prophetic. I'm just able to communicate it. I don't think you'd be, have to be prophetic overly prophetic to sense it because all you got to do is just walk out in it. There will be leadership tensions. There will be political tensions. There will be great provisional tensions. 
because things are changing. They are necessary to change. Supernatural atmospheric tensions. See, another word for pay is mystical, supernatural. All of a sudden, you're going to start seeing the supernatural whether you believe in it or not. It's just going to happen, and you're going to have to acknowledge it if you're going to go anywhere else. Because we are now in a supernatural atmosphere. Things you wouldn't... Now, I grew up in a supernatural atmosphere. Therefore, it has never been difficult for me to see and recognize the supernatural. Dark and light. But now it becomes visible in a way that it's like some sort of veil has lifted off of us. And even those who don't believe in the supernatural will be able to recognize that was supernatural. And that's what's going to happen. And so you've got to be aware that you want the supernatural power of Holy Spirit coming alive in you. Young people, you've got to understand, you've got to get to know all the power of Holy Spirit's manifestations. You've got to know, you can't just rely upon us and us knowing. I remember I, I had operated in all sorts of stuff. Growing up, my family operated in it. When I started having word of knowledge, the enemy would accuse me of having ESP versus word of knowledge. One day I laid down on the couch. I said, I'm not getting up from this couch until God divides asunder and shows me the difference between ESP and word of knowledge. Because it's a fine line. Everything... This season becomes a fine line. And you're going to have to know by the Spirit, this is what God is saying. This is what God is doing. Now, there's one new man tensions going on, David and Leslie. So with these one new man tensions, you have gender tensions. You have racial tensions. You have sectarian tensions. Uh, tensions. And so all of a sudden things are happening. Now I want to end by showing you two things and then I want to impart some things to you. Turn with me to 2 Kings 4. The Lord spoke to me and said this will be a sign of for my people in provisional tensions. Thank you, Aaron, for helping me. It was Aaron's first time here. You know, everybody we've got always just wants to come here just to see <laughs> what they have experienced at our place when your people come over to, and we hear Kent speak. It's amazing. So they come, they've all wanted to come here. So I think most of them have made a visit over. Now, here's the first one I want to show you. It's provisional tensions. Two women, both women are in a crisis of change. I'll take the latter first. She doesn't have a future because she's barren. So what she does is she takes her provision and she makes room for a new prophetic move in her territory. Now, let me just give that to you. You can get that without me saying a lot. They made, she made room for a new prophetic move in her territory Therefore, when Elijah came in, she built the prophet a room. He was able to have a place in that territory 
so that he can operate out of that territory. She had plenty of money. She wasn't a needy uh, lady. And, but how she used her provision became very key for her future. So remember, he broke that barren curse off of her. She got pregnant, and when the child was about seven years old, the child died. Because she had made room for him, he resurrected that child, and her future continued on. Now, that's a one key pattern this year. In other words, look at your provision you have. Make sure that you're acknowledging what God has said about that provision. Don't think it's just coming to you because you're precious. Make sure you acknowledge what God is saying about your provision. And when you do that, he will make more room for you to use it. Because you know what happened with her. They went into a terrible drought. And she was the richest lady in the whole area. And she had to give up everything go down to the Philistines, stay with the Philistines, but she always trusted the prophetic dimension that was operating in her territory. She moved with it. Now hear me. Move with the prophetic dimension that is now moving in this territory. And remember... After the drought, she's coming in, and Gehazi, Elijah, Elisha's assistant, the king, is, he's telling the king all these stories, and he's telling the king about this one lady who had made room for the prophet, was barren, had a child, the child died, and the child resurrected, and all of a sudden, she's standing listening to his testimony. In the midst of you speaking testimonies from other seasons, all of a sudden God is going to manifest in ways that he starts an acceleration of movement on your behalf to carry you into a new dimension. Doesn't matter what testimony you're speaking. That's part of this new season. And remember, he said, here's the lady right here and her son. And the king looks at her and says, don't just give her back everything she lost over the last seven years. Now repay her in time, in other words, for what was taken from her. Now, I'm telling you, all of a sudden, because of us moving in our testimonies from one season and using them in the prophetic move of God in this next season, God's going to start multiplying us sevenfold, tenfold, thirtyfold, a hundredfold. What am I saying to you? You're going to have to speak it. You're going to have to speak out. You're going to have to rehearse what God has done in you. You're going to have to be willing to say it. But let me go back to the first woman. She knows the prophets. Her husband was one. Obadiah most likely and he died and it left her in a hard place of debt. Therefore, the debtors are coming for her children. And she goes to Elisha, who she knows is a senior prophet in the area, and tells him what's happening. And he just says, he asks her, first of all, what is your need? 
Do not be afraid to say, Lord, I need this to move forward. Some of us, we cower down under the enemy's power and we're not afraid to say, Lord, because we're, we've got a, a level of unbelief he puts on us that we really don't believe God's going to come through on our behalf. Therefore, we don't ask him. Now hear me. Just say it. So there's this law of need that produces a movement with use. It's called the law of use. So Elisha just says, what do you have that we can use? And she said, I got a little oil. And this is what he says, just like he goes back to what happened in Egypt. See, when you understand the word of God, these people aren't just recreating this. They know certain things that have happened in Torah and therefore they're using their testimony and they're using what's happened and he goes back and said go to your neighbors and get every vessel you can get now don't be afraid to go knock on people's doors and say now I've got to have this to have some help matter of fact look at it this way the Lord even did this. He said, I I'm going to need a coat to go in to Jerusalem to do what I've been commanded by Father to do on your behalf. Go tell that people, that family over there, I need their coat. He did the same thing. And he said, they'll give, they'll give you that coat. You know why? Because Zechariah had prophesied he had to have the coat to go in. Once you know what God's saying, God is going to give you what you need to accomplish what you need to accomplish. He knew he had to have that coat to go in there. Because God had said he would have that coat to go in there. See, what am I saying to us? Two things. Review where you've come from. This widow did. She had always, her family had been part of the prophets. She knew who to go to. He told her what to do. She did it because she didn't want to give up her future. Now, I want you to say this out loud. I'm not giving up my future. It doesn't matter if you're 112 out there today. If you're still breathing, you're not giving up your future until you've done everything you're supposed to. Just like the other woman, I don't want to give up my future. It's well with my soul, but I don't want to give up my future. And she didn't, and the Lord brought her future back to her. See, this year of this era is about resetting our future. And with Alabama moving out first, it is resetting the future of this entire nation. All of a sudden, they start pouring this oil. It's just amazing. They're pouring the oil. And they're pouring the oil. And they're pouring the oil. When the containers are all full, she said to her son, bring me another container. And he said, there's not one left. So the oil 
stopped. The oil stopped so they could be set free into the next dimension of what God was telling them to go into. Her sons probably were now going to become prophets. She had seen the Lord move. I'm telling you as signs, God is getting things to an end so we can begin again, move forward in a new way, and advance. Now, I want to say this to you. Alabama, you have stepped in to a move of God. Do not step back until you see every container, every county, every person that wants to be filled, filled and moving forward. But I say to you, this is just the beginning of what is about to happen here. Get ready. Make room. For you will be the first to experience a harvest. That America will write about. And it will be said. This move of God began in Alabama. Let's stand up. Now just lift both hands. You know, it's the year of this double hand. <sighs> Father, your spirit is in this place. Your people's in this place. The move of God is in this place. The prototype of the move of God is in this place. I want to ask our worshipers to come back up here. Lord, I'm going to ask for the next portion of your spirit and your glory to come into Alabama. Lord, I say this year will be a redefining, realigning, but reforming of the boundaries for your glory to be to be held and nurtured here in this state. Can't for you and Bill. I, I brought you something I had made. It's not the mantle I have for you, but it's the mantle for right now. Because the Lord showed me your mantle for the future. He said, by April, you will be wearing a mantle that will, you will teach about how God is producing and how he is creating new things. But this one is filled with clocks. So if you guys will come stand in front of them. The Lord says you're moving the purpose of my nation back in time. You're moving the purposes of the state back in time. I'm bringing watches alongside of you. 
For the Lord says, you will be known as creating a new model of watchman anointing that will rise from this state. And you will teach states how to watch the move of the Spirit and the move of the glory of their states. You will connect with every group in this state that is willing to connect. And as I have said to my own disciples, if they will receive you, go with them. If they won't, just keep moving. The Lord says, this is not a time of stopping. This is a time of advancement. And I say to you, you will move in perfect timing until my glory is seen and is manifested. It will be heard that the glory of God is moving across Alabama. I say, watch the winds, for as the winds blow, my glory is coming in. I say, watch the sound of the wind, because it will target to you where the Spirit of God is going to land and operate. I say, I'll give you victory against your enemies. I will cause every tongue that speaks against you to fall. So I say, get ready, and get ready also, because you will host uh, uh, key people in this place. You will host some of the, it will surprise you, the key people that come to this place, that will say, I want this to be heard throughout this nation. I say to you, this will be known as a place where my voice goes forth. Get ready for your, for the clock is now moving in perfect time and you are wearing a new anointing of timing to accomplish my purpose, saith the Lord. Let's thank God for what he's doing. I want you to put your hand on someone near you. I want you to pray over them. I want you to decree over them that new levels of, of, of provision is coming to them. Just decree it over them with your mouth. Speak it over them. Decree that their provision is going to break through in new dimensions. Now decree their testimony is going to come forth in a new dimension. Now, I don't know what about what Kent was talking about, but I have to give. So I'm going to turn this back to you. There is an anointing here for us to give in to the move of God that is here in Alabama. Let's thank God one more time for what he's doing.